So we begin our ninth week in the book of Acts and finish up chapter two, uh, Lord willing, this week. So go ahead and see if you can pronounce the Greek. Uh, we're going to do three verses today, um, starting with a verse that I was supposed to finish last week, but uh, got sorted a little bit there. Okay, how'd you do? Here's how I would do it. Uh, Asphalos un gnosketo pas oikos Israel hoti kai kurion auton kai kreston epoisen hotheos. Tuton ton yesun hon humes estaurosate. Verse 32. Akusantes de uh, katenugesan, nugesan, uh, tain kar, kardian, eponte, proston petron, kaitus loipus apo, apostolus. Direct quote with a capital letter there. T poiesomen. What should we do? Andres Adolfoi, question. Verse 38. Petros de prosautus, metanoesate, kai baptisteto, hekastos humon, epito honomoti, Jesu Christu eis officin, ton hamartion humon, kai lemsesthe, Tain Dorean to Hagiu Penumatos. Okay, well, that's quite a lot today. Uh, three verses, and they're not short verses. Uh, now, see, take your hand and, and see if you can translate them. Here's how I would translate it. Therefore, post positive doesn't come where it's supposed to, but we're going to translate it first. Therefore, and of course, therefore, when you see it, therefore, ask what it's there for. It implies logical causation here. Therefore, assuredly, securely, asphaltly, therefore, securely, let know, let all the house of Israel know, uh, command, that, noun clause, both Lord, him, and Christ made God. We put it into our little Greek pipe and smoke it, and it comes out, uh, let all the house of Israel know that God has made him both Lord and Christ. Again, notice the timing that in the in the thought world of Luke here, Jesus assumes the position of Lord and Christ most most meaningfully after he has risen from the dead and is seated at the right hand of God the Father in the heavens and is enthroned as Lord, enthroned as Christ. He is Lord, he is Lord, he is risen from the dead and he is Lord. Okay. This the Jesus whom you crucified. Okay. Him, who the God has made him Lord in Christ, namely this Jesus. Notice that this is accusative, matching the case of Lord in Christ. It's the object of epoisin. God made what? God made him. What did God make him? God made him Lord in Christ, namely this Jesus, apposition, whom, relative clause, you crucified. Verse 37. And, post positive, it's broke straight procrastinated, didn't come where it was supposed to. We're going to translate it first. And having heard, participle, my aunt is an active participle, having heard, they were pierced with regard to the heart. Uh, they were pierced to the heart. What a vivid image. Um, uh, and another procrastinator, but we translate it first. And they said to the Peter, the Peter, um, and the remaining apostles, capital letter, direct discourse, quote, what should we do? Hortatory subjunctive, uh, a should subjunctive. Not, I'm sorry, it's not a hortatory subjunctive. It's a deliberative, it's a deliberative question, um, subjunctive question. What should we do? Um, men, brothers, vocative, question mark, verse 38. And, procrastinator, Peter to them said, quote, another direct discourse, Repent, and let be baptized, each of you, upon the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of the sins of you, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, how to you join the translation? Let's dig in a little bit deeper. It's going to take us three slides to get through the interlinear here uh, today. So, as we've said, therefore, securely, adverb, let know. 
So let all the house of Israel know, this is the subject, even though it comes after the verb, good Hebrew order, by the way, although as far as we know, um, uh, well, Luke was a, was a non-Jew, according to Colossians chapter 4. Uh, but of course, we technically don't know who the author of Acts was. The author of Acts could very well have been a Jew. Uh, but anyway, uh, all the house of Israel let, let know. Uh, this is an imperative. To is a third person singular, active imperative ending. Eto, I've come to memorize, is a third person singular, uh, imperative ending, active. Let X know. Let him know, let her know, let it know. In this case, let all the house of Israel know. That, noun clause. That both Lord, we have a Kai Kai, Kai dot dot dot, Kai dot dot dot, which suggests both am. Both Lord, him, and Christ made God. Again, Hebrew order, interesting. This, the Jesus. Um, so, God made him, this is the direct object. And then this is, a, we call it, I guess, a double accusative. It's like a rock skipping across the pond. God made him, Lord, Christ. Um, uh, and then this is an apposition to him. Namely, this the Jesus, demonstrative pronoun, whom, relative pronoun, you crucified. Um, this is aorist because of the sigma alpha. It's got a lot, nice little augment of the aorist indicative there. We'll parse it later. Uh, Acousantes, my aunt, is an active participle, sigma alpha. Aorist, active participle, because it's a participle, we don't have an augment on the front. Uh, the way we translate an aorist active uh, participle is having whatever. So having heard. And having heard, they were pierced. This is a little bit of weird form, but uh, asan is a third person plural. Um, um, on esse, amen eta, on or asan. And this is the asan. Little weird form. There should be a theta there. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's a second aorist passive. Didn't do the, the theta. The augment is right here. It's a strange word, katanusomai. Kata it's deponent too. Anyway, okay, they were pierced with regard to the heart. Uh, I would call this an accusative of reference because this is, uh, um, seems to be passive. Yeah, anyway, um, so uh, in my classical training, this was called an internal accusative. Okay, um, and, and they said, Arist, active indicative, third plural, they said to the Peter and the rest of the apostles, T, what should we do? I, I mentioned that this was a deliberative subjunctive, first person plural ending. We know this men. Uh, o, ace, a, amen, eta, usi. By the way, the men ending is the place where, you know when I used to say a new with an epsilon in front of it, it's almost always a movable new, not when you have the ending men. Then it's a real men. We are men, first person plural. Um, we are men. Okay. Um, a long vowel before an ending is often a sign of a subjunctive, and it is here. And in the sub, uh, sigma normally indicates future, as we'll see in a second, but when it's in a subjunctive, sigma indicates eris. I'm sorry, Greek is Greek. So it should. what should we do, men, brothers, vocative? Um, and Peter to them said, repent. So this is eris because of the sigma alpha, but it has no augment. Uh, so it's a, a aorist imperative, and te is active, aorist active imperative. Repent, and let be baptized. There's another toe, remember? Let it, let x. Uh, in this case, it's aorist passive, third singular, because of the theta, eta. Let each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, this is different from the baptism of John the Baptist. John the Baptist uh, did a baptism of repentance for Israel, but he did not baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. And so this is a unique uh, Christian baptize. in baptism. In chapter 19, he will have some people re-baptized who'd only been baptized in terms of John. That was not Christian baptism. They need to be baptized again in the name of Jesus Christ. Notice at this point, we're not baptizing, apparently, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That would seem to be a, a slightly later development. I know, uh, anyway, never mind. Okay. For the forgiveness of, of your sins, and you will receive the gift. Uh, C is the key to a hidden sigma. So this is a future here. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, 
So there's the inner linear, lots to parse here. We've already kind of done it. Um, let's see if you can do it. Uh, well, I'm gonna show it to you so you won't have a chance. Um, uh, Gnosketo, uh, um, we already parsed this. It's the present stem, gnosko, so it's present. To is an active imperative, third singular imperative. By the way, when you had the theta, eta, it, it just um, countermand that order. It, it trumps it uh, a little bit. In a second, I'll show you the theta, eta trumps my, my statement that to is an active uh, imperative ending. Okay, uh, a new with an epsilon in front of it is almost always a movable new. Throw it away. Epsilon is a third person singular, very common third person singular. Uh, eh is a very common third person singular, active indicative past tense ending with a sigma, it's eris. There's the augment, third singular, poieto, contract verb. Uh, already parsed this as well. My aunt is an active participle, sigma alpha, eris, active participle. S, uh, archon, anta, santi, anta, antes, nominative plural, masculine ending. Uh, no augment because it's a participle, a cool matata. Um, okay, this is the weird one. It's from Katanusamai. Uh, it should have a theta. If it had a theta, then we'd see the theta eight and we'd say air is passive. Actually, you know, I don't know whether it's deponent um, or not, because just because a word is deponent in the present, oh my, it's deponent in the present, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be deponent everywhere. This translated really well as they were pierced. That's a nice aorist passive. So maybe it's not deponent anyway. Maybe it's just passive uh, because words don't have to be deponent in every form. They are, words are deponent by principal part, not by, not by the original vocabulary form. So this might simply be an aorist passive indicative. Um, again, doesn't have the theta, which is very disappointing to me, but that's where the aorist passive comes from. Third person plural, indicative from katanusamai. Okay. Um, already, we've already parsed this one pretty well. Uh, the omega tells me it's subjunctive. Sigma with the subjunctive is aorist. Active endings, aorist active subjunctive. Uh, first plural, it is a deliberative, subjun deliberative subjunctive, deliberative question uh, in this context. Already parsed this one too. Sigma alpha tells me it's aorist. Uh, no augment, so it must be imperative. The second person, again, I'll say it again. Second person per plural imperative and second person plural indicative uh, look exactly the same in the present tense. They look almost exactly the same in the aorist tense. The only difference is, is that the imperative doesn't have an augment. There's no epsilon uh, here. Okay, we're getting close. So here's the exception to the toe as a third person singular uh, active. This is third person singular, but because of the theta, eta, it's aorist passive imperative. To, te, tosan are the third singular, second plural, second uh, third plural imperative endings. Lastly, lame is the future because of the C is the key to the hidden sigma. Uh, the is a second person plural middle, uh, but this is this is just happens to be deponent in the future stem. Lame so my is the the second principal part of Lombano. Don't ask why this. So here's an example of a word that is not deponent in the present tense, but in the future tense it is. You just have to memorize all these little annoying details. Um, you can kind of see that it's Lombano, although it's uh, undergone radiation. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, lots of lots of stuff. Three verses packed with lots of interesting forms and uh, good stuff too, of course. See my overview uh, from yesterday for some of the interpretation.